intuitionist mathematics. I have very mixed feelings about this. It's an idea that requires abandoning our traditional notion of mathematics. And I don't know about you, but I quite like my math the traditional way. Well done. If intuitionist mathematics sounds like nonsense that young people are up to these days, not so. The idea is about a century old, and in the past years, it's been revived by Nicolas Gisard to make sense of quantum physics. He says that the reason we can't make sense of quantum physics is not that we don't understand physics, it's that none of us uses maths correctly. Yes, that's kind of like saying the reason you can't make sense of Jordan Peterson is not Jordan Peterson, it's that none of us uses language correctly possible, but maybe not the most plausible explanation. Then again, we've already tried the plausible explanations for quantum physics and they didn't work. So let's have a look at what Gisard has to offer. Nicolas Gisard is a Swiss physicist who has worked on both the experimental and theoretical side of quantum physics, mostly quantum communication and cryptography. He and I share a common conviction, which is that quantum mechanics is useful, all right, but fundamentally not how reality works. We have, however, very different reasons for believing this. Gisard thinks that we should not use mathematics that we can't construct ourselves. This is an idea that goes back to the Dutch mathematician Leutzenbrauer in the early 20th century. He said that we shouldn't treat mathematics as an abstract, eternal truth existing independently of human thought. Instead, he said, mathematics is dynamic, evolving and rooted in human intuition. And we should only use that math that is real in the sense that we can create it. The best example is also the one most relevant to Gisard's case, which is that most real numbers are in some sense not real. Real numbers can be written as a string with infinitely many digits. But we can never write down a number with infinitely many digits. We can't measure anything to infinite precision. We can't really use real numbers in a computer. We actually can only use a very small subset of the real numbers, namely those that can be written with a finite number of digits. The intuitionist mathematician, therefore, should not work with real numbers. And that returns us to Gisele. He says that in physics, we use intuitionist mathematics anyway, whether we want that or not. We're not conscious that we are somehow doing intuitionistic mathematics, but that's what we are doing. It does work. We don't use real numbers with infinite information. It doesn't fit in the computer anyway. And because of that, he thinks that it's a mistake to say that anything physically measurable is a real number. It's only determined in so far as we've measured it. And anything beyond that, the next digit, is undetermined until we measure it. It just doesn't have a value until we look at it. Does that sound familiar? That something is undetermined until we measure it? Yes, that's exactly how quantum mechanics works. It's just that in quantum mechanics, we attribute it to a different mathematical property. In the mathematics of quantum mechanics, we find descriptions for objects that we never see in the real world. Cats that are dead and alive, particles that are in two places at once, atoms that can both decay and don't decay. It's there in the mathematics, but whenever we look at it, we find the objects in only one state. Cats are either dead or alive, but not both. That's what we see. So somehow the act of measurement makes these strange mathematical possibilities go away and turns them into something real. Gisard now says that this happens because we're using mathematics the wrong way. A quantum state doesn't have a distinct property until the measurement because the maths just doesn't exist yet. We have to create the number for the measurement result with the measurement. Gisard says that this explains why nature is fundamentally indeterministic and, moreover, that it was never reasonable to expect a deterministic theory even before quantum physics came along. We have erroneously used the platonic ideals of mathematics rather than sticking with the ones that we can actually construct ourselves. He says there are other consequences of this idea, too. The most important one is that the passage of time is real in the sense 
sense that the universe comes into being. Because the past that we have already seen, we have already called the mathematics into existence, but the future hasn't yet been constructed. As he writes in a paper from 2020, in indeterministic physics, the future is open, in sharp contrast to the block universe view. Consequently, statements and propositions about the future need not be either true or false. For example, the proposition, it'll rain in exactly one year time from now at Piccadilly Circus, is neither true, because it's not predetermined that it'll rain, nor is it false, because it's not predetermined that it'll not rain. So they this is my best summary of what Jesus is saying. He thinks he's found the origin of the indeterminism that we see in quantum physics, and he says it comes from mathematics. Let me then tell you what I think about this. I'm an instrumentalist. I think that all the theories we use are just ways to describe observations. Using platonic pure maths has worked very well to that end. Since I don't think that maths is real, but just a description of reality, I also don't think we should only be allowed to use maths that we can really construct. More importantly, I don't see how to make sense of this intuitionist maths, because the question of how many digits of measurable quantities we know is ambiguous. If you look at dimensionless numbers, if you've ever done a numerical calculation with exponential functions, you'll know that you get to, say, 40 digits very, very quickly. Now, the intuitionist could say anything beyond the 40th digit is not real, but you can instead work with a logarithm and suddenly the numbers you work with have far fewer digits. What's happening here is that the number of digits you need depends on the way you write the algorithm, and there are different ways to do this. So I don't see how Gizan's idea is even well defined. The other problem I see is the question of who or what constructs the maths. Why does it matter what we construct? This seems to me just a different way to talk about the measurement problem and not a solution to it. And finally, I think that Gizan's idea that time really passes doesn't work, because even in this intuitionist mathematics, there's no way to identify the present moment without just postulating that it's somehow special. As you can probably tell, I'm not very convinced by this. That said, the discussion about intuitionist mathematics and the impossibility of truly dealing with real numbers or infinite sets, etc., ties into a larger discussion about whether the laws of physics need to be computable in the sense that, well, a computer can reproduce them. There are classes of problems, the solution to which we know to not be computable. Indeed, Roger Penrose believes that consciousness is not computable. And so, despite my misgivings, I find it a very interesting question whether our ability to understand nature is fundamentally limited by maths. But if you want to improve your mathematical intuition, maybe Gizan's papers are not the best place to start. I recommend instead that you check out Brilliant, which is a great place to learn maths, science and computer science. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples like what it means to go viral on X, Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.